Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session we introduced a multi-person bargaining problem and some difficulties associated with it and then we went to define what is called the transferable utility games and non-transferable utility games. But in the sequel we will concentrate only on TU games, the cooperative games with characteristic form or transferable utility games. So, we will not consider the N2U games. Okay. Now, we will see some examples of uh, this TU games. So, let us look at the dollar game, divide the dollar game. So that is where uh, we introduce this multi person bargaining game and then multiple solutions possible. So, let us look at this thing. So, if there are 3 players all of them together worth is 300, they have to share this 300 rupees and we want if only 2 people are sharing. we want them to get 0, then uh, v of singleton 1, v of singleton 2, v of singleton 3 all of them also get 0. So, they have to share 300, but uh, no less this is the version 1. So, in fact, this is for version 1. In the version 2, we said uh, player 1 and 2 are uh, the ones who is making the decision whatever they choose the therefore, V of uh, 1, 2, 3 is 300 this is same as V of 1, 2 and any other combinations get all the other combinations get 0, this is this. So, likewise we can actually look at the other 2 versions also. So, this gives you a the characteristic form representation for the game. So, now uh, basically for each such characteristic form what is the corresponding solution and we will try to build that solution concepts in this course. Now, let us look at uh, another uh, this thing. So, there is a let us say uh, another example is voting game. So, there is uh, some 4 parties so 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the party 1 let us say they have 45 uh, members in the let us say in the parliament and party 2 has let us say 25, party 3 has 15 members party 4 has 12 members. So, let us say to pass any bill is 51 votes are required. Okay. So, the this situation we can model it as a TU game with 4 players. So, of course, no single party has enough uh, this thing. So, no single party has 51 votes. So, therefore, single party gets uh, 0 this thing. Now, V of 1, 2. 1, 2 together is more than 51. In fact, any 2 if you take it they are going to be more than 51. So, therefore, all of them get let us say full this thing. So, let me put in fact, when I said uh, any 2 is basically 22 and 3 together would not get uh, 
if one joins with any of them then only 51 more than 51 volts are there. So, uh, if one is not joining with any of them 2 and 3 together will get 0 and similarly 3, 4 or 4, 2 together, but one if joins any one of them then they get full. So, V 1, 4 and uh, V 1, 3, 4. I will remove the brace symbol here 134, 124, 234, V1234, all of them has 100 and V23, V34, V24 again get 0. So, if the number of votes by the parties is more than 51 then they are getting full 100 and otherwise that correlation gets 0. So, this is a another model of this voting game. In fact, there are several examples that we can uh, come up with this. So, let us look at some representations for U games. Okay. So, we particularly will look at uh, min max representation. So, so basically we are considering a strategic form game with transferable utility. Let us say consider a game G where the set of players are N, their strategy sets are S1, S2, Sn and their utility functions are Ui. Let us consider this one. This is a strategic form game like the games that we have discussed in the non-cooperative games. In fact, in much of our analysis we only consider two player games, but we can consider a same situations with multiple players several of the existential uh, results and everything can be proved. So, we are considering such strategic form games and then we are assuming that this is a transferable utility with is a transferable utility. Okay. And uh, let us say C is a coalition, any coalition let us take and then N minus C is the remaining players if you have taken this coalition C and then N minus C denotes the remaining players. Now, let us take S, S, N minus C is basically the, the product of S, J, J is in N minus C and similarly S, C is the product of the strategies of the players in the coalition C and n minus n minus C the product of the strategy the strategy to pulls from the outside that coalition C and this is inside the coalition. Now, let us look at uh, I would like to define the delta S C is basically correlated strategies of C players in So, let us say because the players in C are forming a correlation. So, therefore, I consider the all the correlated strategies this thing. Similarly, delta S n minus C. Now, look at uh, U i of sigma C sigma n minus C. This is the utility that the player i is getting. If the people the players in the correlation C chooses sigma C and people in n minus c choose sigma n minus c. In fact, this is nothing but uh, sigma s c in s c. U i s c. Basically, because the if they choose S C with probability sigma C S C and S n minus C with probability sigma n minus C S n minus C. So, therefore, they will get U i S C S n minus C with the probability sigma C S C into sigma n minus C this thing and sum it over all the this thing. So, this is the utility that they will get it. Now, I can define V C the worth of this coalition is the best that they can get it that is basically the minimum S n minus c or 
not uh, because we are need to look at the correlated strategies s sigma n minus c max sigma c then look at the the ui sigma c sigma n minus c this is the utility that ith player is getting but now you are looking at the all the sum of all the players in the correlation now this i can take it as a worth of the correlation c in the strategic game and then this this we can think it as a now a game in a characteristic form so from the any strategic form or normal form game any n player game you take it from there we can actually introduce a correlation game with transferable utility via for example this representation this is not the only way there are other ways of uh, representing we will we will not go further into this one but we will now start studying the correlation games now we will introduce few properties of uh, this tu games so the first uh, thing is known as a super additive games all these things will be necessary as we go further so we consider a tu game this is super additive if the following condition holds we if c and d are two correlations look at the worth of c union d this should be bigger than v of c plus v of d this is true for all c d any two correlations such that c intersection d is empty if you take two correlations c and d non designed correlation if they form together they are more worth than individually they are so that is the super additive so let us look at some examples ok so let us take uh, n to be 1 2 3 4 so there are 4 players then v is given by v 1 v 2 v 3 v 4 is 0 v ok sorry the, I am considering only 4 player game v of 1 2 v of 1 3 v of 2 3 v of 1 2 3 4 this thing so basically if uh, at least majority are agreeing it then they are getting 300 it is like it is the divide and divide the dollar game and if there are at least 2 players agree then they are getting the worth 300 if only one person agrees then they are getting 0 so this is the majority voting game ok now another example we can uh, write is that is the following thing take uh, v of 1 is 3 v of 2 is 2 v of 3 is 1 v of 1 2 is 8 v of 1 3 is 6.5 v of 2 3 is 8.2 v 1 2 3 is 11.2 in fact uh, this game is introduced in some other context so i only give here the numbers so we can verify that this is also a super additive game is super additive ok next I would like to introduce what is called super additive cover ok so given a game NV the super additive cover of V is is the super additive game in W such that V of C is less than equals to W of C for all C contained in N. Okay. Basically we are considering you take any game N V and then you find another W another characteristic function W satisfying the super additive 
structure such that V of C is always less than equals to W C and the W satisfies this previous assumption. Okay. So, such a game is the super additive cover. In fact, uh, how to characterize this? I will just mention it, but without uh, this thing, let us say take uh, let us say PC basically the set of all partitions of C. What is a partition of C means? C can be written as a union of certain sets C1, C2, CK, they are all designed and their union is C. So, that is basically the partition of C and look at all partitions. Now, the WC is defined as the following way max of J is equals to 1 to K of V of T J such that T1 Tk is basically a partition of this. Take any partition T1, T2, Tk of C and their union is C. Now look at the sum of Vtjs and then you take this, this maximum over all this thing and I define this for every C in this thing. In fact, then Nw is super additive cover. So, this is not difficult to prove this one. So, I will leave it for you to work out. Now, we will start introducing some of the important concepts here in the cooperative games. The first thing is imputation. So, what is we consider always TU game. So, even if I do not mention TU game, we are considering only TU games. Let us look at NV. So, Imputation is basically is an allocation x1, x2, xn. So, you are allocating the worth to each individual satisfying the following thing, satisfying 1. So, each xi should be bigger than vi because individually the person is worth vi. So, any allocation that you want that should be bigger than xi vi. This is known as individual rationality. If you specify any allocation where xi is strictly less than vi, he will never accept that because individually he is getting. So, he will never join in the correlation. So, the second thing is that the all the allocations sum of all the allocation should be total worth. This is known as a collective rationality because the total worth V n should be divided among these players. So, all this therefore, the sum of their uh, individual al their allocations should be equal to V n otherwise you can always increase one of the player. So, if if you are not considering the collective rationality, then they certainly will not accept. So, an allocation satisfying these two conditions is known as an imputation and these imputations are the ones which the players will accept. Okay. So, now let us look at another definition essential and inessential. games. So, super NV is super additive. So, consider a super additive game and the, this is said to be essential if V of I I belongs to C is less than or equals to V n. You take any correlation C 
and then summation v i individually how much they are getting that should always be less than cost v and the total worth then you call it as an essential and uh, we call it inessential if the sum of the individual uh, worth that they are getting total how much they are getting if that is exactly same as v n then this is called inessential because in essential is there is no other way you can allocate in some way. Okay. In fact, we can prove that if n v is in essential then summation i in c v i is nothing but v of c it is it cannot be bigger than this. So, this is uh, true for every c in n this is again a trivial exercise to prove this one. Therefore, uh, the inessential game only imputation is there is only one imputation available in this thing. So, for uh, essential games there are infinitely many imputations. So, essential games will have many imputations in fact infinitely many which is not hard to see it. Next we will introduce a strategic equivalence of uh, of TU games. In fact, even though we have not mentioned it very clearly in the non cooperative games, we can actually say that the two games are strategically equivalent when they are they are best response equivalent. In fact, uh, when we were discussing potential games, we have introduced this concept. So, in fact, uh, what you can in general say is that the two games are strategically equivalent if their best response structure is same. The similarly, how do you say that two TU games are equivalent, strategically equivalent. So, let us uh, look at it N V and N take two TU games, they are strategically equivalent. If there exists some constant C1, C2, Cn, of course, they are all uh, real numbers and again a number b greater than 0 such that Wc is nothing but V of C plus summation Ci, I belongs to C into B. If the worth of the coalition C in the second game is simply the worth of coalition C plus some constant which is uh, given by some C I, I belongs to C and it is entire thing is multiplied by B. So, whenever this happens uh, you say that these two games are strategically equivalent. So, in a sense the dynamics among the two games are going to be equivalent. So, in fact, whatever one player gets in one this thing you can actually get a, a corresponding allocation rule. So, in fact, uh, as I said the dynamics are going to be equivalent. In fact, one important result here is that that any super additive essential n person characteristic form game G is basically strategically equivalent. to unique game in 
with n the players n players we take it then v1 v2 vn all of them individually get zeros and total worth is 1 and 0 less than equals to v of c less than equals to 1 for all c contained in n. The total worth is 1 and then individually they are all getting 0 and then worth of any correlation is in between 0 and 1. So, this game is called the 0 1 normalization of the original game. So, in fact, uh, this how to prove this one even though we will not go into the proof of this one is looking at this uh, definition somehow you need to choose this constants in such a way that for individual it will be 0 and total worth is 1. So, we can check it. in fact uh, it is not very hard to look at this one. Okay. So, this introduces some important concepts regarding these two a games and then uh, we need to now uh, discuss the solution concept which we will do it in the next session. We will stop with this and we will continue in the next session. Thank you.